That's what I see coming. I see severe persecution coming. I sure hope and pray that the Lord takes us out. I don't believe in the rapture. But I know hardships are ahead, but I know He'll take He'll take care of us. Don't matter. He'll if we go through it, He'll be with us. Amen. I believe that. I'm not disheartened by that. I certainly am encouraged by the rapture. And I certainly tell you as a pastor, I believe in the rapture of the church. How about the commitment to the Lord? We need to leave this kind of example for our children. We need to become people of consistency. The Bible calls it faithfulness. You see, Christian life isn't something that we put on in public and we take it off at home. It's God's intention that we continually grow spiritually, become mature, and grow in integrity. And if we want our children to love and obey the Lord, we should be filling our own hearts and our own minds with scriptures. Have your children ever seen you studying the Bible? Have they ever seen you reading, studying the Bible? If they don't, you think they'll consider the Bible to be important? Probably not. It's important that children see you studying God's Word. Putting time aside for God's Word. Is God important to you? Is going to church important to you? Make it a priority and be consistent. We're not here out of duty or because we we want to get a medal. I can I, I grew up in a church where they gave medals for going to church. Yeah. Little small pins. Some of them look like brigadier generals. <laughs> we don't we don't give medals for faithfulness. But God keeps track how faithful you are. And that's all that's necessary. That he keeps track. Are you faithful to him? Are you filling your hearts and minds with God's, with the word of God? You see, when our kids see our love for God, and when we demonstrate our love for God by our obedience to, to his commands, they will be more likely to adopt those same attitudes and practices when they see that. So have you been a good role model as parents? Have you been a real good role model for that? Well, there's areas in my life I know I could have done better. I think about that country singer. I believe it's Ronnie Millsap. 2020 vision, but only looking back. Mm hmm. If we profess to believe God's word, but we ignore his instruction regarding our home and our children, you see our children will be confused. In Ephesians chapter 5, 22 and 23, is a portion of scripture I read just about 98% of the time. It's in the, in the book that I use for weddings. Wives, be subject to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church. You see, our culture today regards this as being antique or old-fashioned. It is a model of male superiority and female oppression, our culture and our world says. But I can tell you this, I don't care what the world or Hollywood says. I'm more concerned about what the Lord says. The Lord has divinely appointed an order for all his creation. Brother Elroy spoke a lot about my message today and he didn't know it. He spoke how he felt about his family and that's exactly what I'm talking about. He also thought, spoke about, can you imagine the sun not shining? How dreary 
How many days of dreariness would that be with the sun? You never get to see the sun. I can tell you this. The Lord has decreed the movement of the sun, the movement of the moon. He hung the stars in place. He measured the universe in the span of his hand. He measured the universe in the span of his hand. And you see how perfectly and beautiful everything functions. He's drawn borders in the edges of the ocean and said, this is where you'll stop. And it stopped for all these years. But he has also decreed the purpose and function of the family. And I can tell you, the husband and wives, the husband has been entrusted with being a provider and a protector and a decision maker, a humble servant, to his family. And I can tell you that for any man who recognizes this responsibility, when he recognizes this, he knows he needs the help of his wife. And I can tell you her role of submission is not that of a doormat. She is a cherished helper and partner. And although their roles in the family are different, Husbands and wives are equal in worth and in value. And in our Lord's wisdom, the Lord knows that this is the best arrangement for the family. When children grow up in a home where this pattern is honored and practiced, they will develop a sense of security and confidence in the wisdom of God's design for every area of life. If we want our children to follow, as Timothy followed Paul, we need to be honest and transparent. When we make mistakes, we need to humbly admit that we were wrong. And if necessary, apologize to our children. But sometimes we might fear that they will see this as a sign of weakness. But I can tell you, in reality, their respect for us will increase when we are honest about our failures. Because we're not perfect parents. I'm not a perfect parent. I'm not a perfect grandpa. But when you make mistakes, say, look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We can be short with our tongue. We can say things that cut so deeply. And it's usually done in a time of anger, frustration. Maybe there was something else going on at the time in your home and it seemed like when the plate's full, and now it's really full. Now it's running over. You listening to me? You hear what I'm saying? Gee, I wonder how many times we've said something quick or sharp. And after we said it, we thought, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said it quite that way. Did your children hear that? Did you hurt them? Did you offend them? Now, I know that some families are so worried and offending their children that they don't do any discipline. But then it goes the other way. Then it goes the other way. It goes the wrong way. A lot of that's happening today in our society. Children left go to do whatever they want to do. But then I have also seen and witnessed children who have been deeply offended by their parents. And physically hurt and wounded to this day. 
And that goes back to that recording I told you earlier that runs and plays like a recording. And you remember when your father backhanded you or hit you and threw you into the corner and hurt you physically and abused you physically? This is recording and it's still going. And when it's Father's Day, it's hard for you to muster up any kind of feeling for fathers because your father was so nasty to you. Because this recording is still going on. And you still see and hear those terrible times and it plays over and over and over and over. Don't do that with your children. If you do, and you realize what you've done, ask them to forgive you. I'm sorry. I lost my temper. It made me angry. And I'm sorry. I wasn't having a good day as it was. There were some other things that you didn't know was going on. And then when you did this, that really upset the card. And I'm sorry. Please forgive me. With God's help, I'll try to do better. Do you realize you can wound your children all their life? Transparency. Give our children the freedom to express their thoughts and their feelings when they see any inconsistency in us. A pastor relates this. When my daughter Becky was young, she asked to speak to me one Sunday before church. After venting to me for about 10 minutes, she turned and walked away. Three weeks later, she told me that because I gave her the freedom to speak her mind without defending myself, that she loved me even more than before. God used this incident in both of our lives. He revealed something that I needed to hear. And he increased my daughter's trust in her dad. Children need the stability that comes from a home that's founded on biblical truth that is exemplified in word, in attitude, and in deed. We will never be perfect parents, but we have a perfect Heavenly Father who teaches and guides and trains us all along the way. Our mission here at the church is to lead people worldwide into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and to, dis and to strengthen our local churches. But we should never forget that our mission field begins in our own homes. May God bless you as you draw closer to the Lord and invite your children and your loved ones to do the same. <clears throat> I'm asking God to come. We're going to have our anointing service at this time. <clears throat>